Friends, we have a major breaking story coming out of New York City. Uh, we have the Verrazano Narrows Bridge in New York City was almost hit by a container ship. Uh, the reports are just coming in now, but it has been confirmed uh, on some of the freight tracking uh, websites that track container ships. But a major container, sh container ship, the APL Qingdao, uh, was uh, lost control. It was under the power of tugboats, but it came out of the channel, uh, lost power and lost control, and almost hit the bridge. A very similar story as to what happened in Baltimore. We got a bunch of updates that are coming out right now that we need to get to you uh, because this is making the Baltimore Bridge look more and more like an attack if another item very similar happens to it in another port. Uh, I'm sorry, but there are just no coincidences quite that extreme. Let's jump into it. Welcome to the Poplar Report. I'm Steve Poplar. I'm an accountant by trade, and we're keeping up to date with what's going on over there. It is the evening over here in India, so I did just see this come across my feed as I uh, uh, got back from uh, doing some work where I am. Um, for those of you who are aware of what I'm doing here in India, I uh, can uh, look into that a little bit. But uh, so this, this ship, the APL Qingdao, uh, we're talking about a major, major container ship, 349 meters long. Uh, if, you, uh, if you know your container ships, that is a big one. Um, it was already under the control of three tugboats when this happened. However, uh, those three tugboats were not able to control the ship. And so you can actually see on the freight tracking website, uh, the ship absolutely uh, not under control came out of the channel. Uh, not only that, but then uh, the tugboats had to kind of just pull it back uh, as best they could kind of out of the way and then brought it around uh, in like a half circle. Uh, they uh, were not able to get the anchor down for a little bit. It took almost an hour to get the ship under control. Uh, the three tugboats were not enough. They had to add another three tugboats uh, before they were able to get control of the container ship. This was less than one kilometer from the uh, Verrazano uh, Narrows Bridge or the Narrows Bridge in New York City, outside New York City. This bridge, if it were to have come down, would have blocked the New York Harbor and with all of the equipment in the North America and even some equipment from potentially from uh, Europe coming over to help with the salvage operation in Baltimore Harbor, this would truly have been devastating. Uh, the New York Harbor, of course, is a massive, massive port. Um, let's get into some of the specifics that we see here. Uh, so like I said, uh, 354 meter long uh, container ship. Uh, this, uh, this is, we're, we're talking about uh, roughly, and this is my ballpark number, uh, given the, the length of the thing, we're looking at over 8,000 TEUs. So we're probably in the 10,000 plus TEUs or 20 foot equivalent units. So those are the little short stubby uh, containers. Uh, 40 foot units are the regular size ones that you put on like trucks and stuff like that. Um, those are 40 foot. Uh, but uh, so even even at 5,040 foot containers, you can just see uh, in your mind's eye how massive this, this thing is. 5,000 of those containers on board at any given time. Uh, this ship, huge. The fact that it had three tugboats that could not control it uh, in the channel as it was heading out to sea. Uh, it was due to be in Norfolk uh, next week. So that was where we're heading from New York City to Norfolk, uh, which is a major military base, of course. Uh, we're, we don't have yet word yet on any of the, um, what was on board it other than just containers. And that is a major continue, continuing threat uh, across the United States that, uh, that we do not consider these container ships uh, to be potential military weapons. Uh, that is one of my major concerns uh, with Taiwan is that they have so many container ships and ships coming into port uh, from China directly. And so we're seeing container ships potentially being used as weapons uh, against U.S. ports here in the U.S. Uh, so now this was a French-owned ship. Uh, we're talking about CGM uh, is the major uh, cargo carrier. So uh, even though it has the name uh, Qingdao, um, which sure sounds Chinese, if you know what I mean, uh, with a Q in there, um, it just... it. It sure looks Chinese, and uh, it, but it probably was 
built in China. That's a, that's a very good guess that was built in China, um, could have been built uh, in Europe, uh, but with a name like that uh, makes you think that it is uh, definitely servicing a lot of the Asia routes. Uh, but uh, no word yet on the crew yet. Like I said, this is a breaking story that we're just getting out to you. Um, Zero Hedge has gotten this out there. They pulled this off Twitter. Uh, has not been yet confirmed by major outlets. However, uh, the freight tracking websites does show the ship um, off the chart. Uh, out, out of the uh, the channel, and then we see it uh, it go into this massive crazy. Uh, crescent shape uh, just before the bridge, um, clearly not in control. And uh, what was going on with that? Um, now, it could have started to move in the crescent shape uh, once the anchor was deployed, um, and that makes sense to kind of go around it. But anchors don't uh, often work like that, where they're like stuck and hard. Uh, what happens is that they are dragged along the surface of the uh, uh, of the river or the, the uh, the channel that they're in and so they, they tend to just add lots and lots of weight and lots and lots of friction as the chain actually lies down on the you know people usually think it's the anchor that actually provides the the pull uh, but the anchor uh, usually doesn't provide most of the friction it's actually the chain that lines uh, down on the actual ocean floor or the channel floor uh, that provides a lot of that and so uh, when you start uh, seeing that action like that um, that is not where ships are supposed to uh, to stop. That's not a place where the ships are supposed to uh, um, uh, wait, uh, put anchor down. Um, and the fact that they took uh, three tugboats and then three more came to assist uh, definitely tells you some things. And then when we hear the, the report of what we're hearing from this is that it lost power. That sounds eerily similar, doesn't it, to the Baltimore story where it lost power just before it turned and slammed into the bridge, right? Um, now, was that currents pushing it out of, uh, out of the, uh, the channel? Uh, quite possibly. I, I know a lot of people are uh, very convinced that it was absolutely, absolutely under power and it was intentional. Um, I think uh, from what this incident is looking like, it does look more and more like this is an intentional attack, but is it intentional from the captain's perspective or the crew's perspective or from the sabotage of the fuel or cyber attack making it lose power uh, just before it hit the bridge uh, just so that it, it would go into the bridge because this is a second ship. And like I, like I said, I don't believe in coincidences like that. That's a little bit stretching uh, the s suspension of disbelief right there. Um, I, I do disbelieve that as a, uh, a just as a happenstance thing that's happening. Um, this definitely is concerning. Let me know down in the comments what you guys are thinking about this, and we will keep on top of this and get you information as we can about it. But uh, I wanted to get this out to you as quickly as possible. Um, so forgive the lighting and the harshness. Uh, uh, I am uh, just shooting this in my room where I am so that we can get this out to you as soon as possible. All right, friends, thanks so much for watching the Poplar Report. I will be back in the States uh, next week week, I believe, late next week, um, and uh, back to uh, the studio and get you that wood paneling that you love so dearly. Actually, you probably like the soundproofing a lot more uh, because it makes the microphone sound a whole heck of a lot better. All right, friends, thanks so much for watching. If you want to check out another video from the channel, there's one right up here. I'll see you over there, or I'll see you guys later. Steve Poplar of the Poplar Report, out.